Hello and welcome to this edition of the Time with Heim podcast. I'm your host, Lynn Cordes, joined by our superintendent, Mr. Heim. How are you today? Hey, doing great. We're right here, on, right up on top of Thanksgiving break. Um, we've gotten here and, 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 and we're excited and uh, hope everybody enjoys their uh, their break and uh, hope everybody has things to be thankful for. It's a much needed break for everybody and well-deserved, but it's an opportunity for us to discuss some of the things that are going on with COVID and some precautions that we want our families and students and staff to think about. So let's start into our COVID summary. Well, first of all, our COVID summary is still on our page. We update that regularly. I think it's been updated today, which uh, in, 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 in almost daily now, Ms. Uh, Lynn is updating that. Thank you very much for taking the time. We try to make that accurate because we want to be honest and transparent with our parents, our teachers, our staff, uh, and everyone involved. Uh, so go to the Lawton ps.org go under community and if you if you scroll down there's a there's a tab that says lps covid summary click on that and you can scroll through the red numbers are the active cases now and the other numbers are throughout the year still yet as as a struggle as it's been we still haven't had a tremendous amount of active cases at the same time in any one site uh, as far as the ratio to adults to students you know we said as long as we can keep and supervise safely students we're going to keep traditional st school open because we know we have a lot of parents who need traditional school we have students that need traditional schools overwhelmingly the leadership i meet with principals uh obviously the directors and, and assistant superintendents here in the office they all feel like in-person learning needs to continue as long as possible so we're working hard so again wash your hands social distance and wear a mask those are the things that keeps us in school. And, you know, the other thing that's starting to come up, this is the time of the year when the flu and colds and strep throats, we cannot say this enough. Please, absolutely do not come to work sick. If you don't feel good, use your sick day. Do not send your child to school sick. Giving your child medicine to break their fever and sending them to school is not acceptable in, in, in this COVID era. You know, so we really, really beg our, our staff and our parents to to keep people who are ill home because that's the that's probably been our biggest problem here lately is e either students or workers because we've all done that I, I've never used sick days well maybe I should have you know that's just a change in a mindset I've probably come to work not a hundred percent when there was a possibility I could have given the flu or a cold or strep throat to a, to a co-worker or even a student I was teaching. And we have to change that mentality. It's not okay, although people my age and my generation, we grew up, your kids go to school no matter what. You go to work. That's what you're supposed to do. We, we just we have to change that mindset. It includes myself. I, I, if I wake up not feeling well, I'm going to have to stay home, and that's that's a – you know, I've been in this business 35 years and probably 30 of them I've had perfect attendance. And uh, I have got to change that mindset that if I don't feel well, uh, I need to stay home. Well, and our parents have done a really good job about keeping their students home and our staff as well. And that has helped our quarantine numbers. Now, the one thing that we've gotten a lot of questions about is that they they still continue to see a high number of absences in the classroom. But that's not always due to a positive case that's a quarantine potentially yeah and, and that still gets to be a mis, you know misunderstanding it, we may have one teacher positive and eight quarantined and somebody says well they've got nine teachers positive no we have one teacher positive you know we're monitoring that and that misunderstanding you know and, and that's I, I told some other day with my own my own daughter who's who, who's the mother of my grandkids that's bad that you get reduced to that role in life but you know we were discussing that because her son's class they they weren't meeting because the teacher got positive so they you know was he quarantined or you know I was trying to ask her and she said no he just can't go to school he's got to be virtual school and and I got to thinking no I do that every day try to explain it to people I'm not going to do it when I'm at home with my family so uh yes quarantine is because you were in close contact with somebody it's you're isolated if you're positive so those are two different things the number of people we have positive is not that high the number of people we have quarantined obviously is uh, uh, getting high but again we're not having very many if any 
of our quarantined, those who got quarantined because of a close contact at school, turning up positive later. Those numbers are really, really low. And a lot of that is because we're wearing masks, we're social distancing, and we're washing our hands. Although we may get quarantined, it's a precaution more than it is a is the fact that you're gonna get you're gonna come up positive while you're on quarantine. Now we did send out something to our staff earlier this week about devices and that has created some confusion by chance and and maybe some speculation that after the thanksgiving break we would be going virtually throughout the whole entire district do you want to clear up those rumors and and share what that is yeah, about and, and sure you know probably the toughest thing and, and and i've made this clear to numerous people my job is not near as hard as other people's jobs i've been getting my paycheck on a regular basis and uh, i'm not in a classroom with students every day. I know people have hard, tougher jobs and every, a lot of stress is, is out there for a lot of people who have, who have hardships and such. But one of those day to days is, you know, are we gonna have school? How are we gonna make those decisions? Well, most people who watch the news see there are schools out there who have already decided they're not gonna come back until after Christmas. Uh, they're going to be virtual that three weeks in between. There's some said they're going to be virtual that week. Also, if you watch the news, you would see that statewide, the numbers have spiked a little bit the last week or so. And if they continue, we could end up with a statewide shutdown where, we, where our students have to stay home. Or it could get in a situation in Lawton where the health department or, or the medical experts say, hey, you guys might ought to stay home for a week or, or, or until after Christmas. And, and those are decisions we have to be prepared to make. And we wanted everyone to have their device at home just in case. The bottom line is we're going to be traditional school on Monday unless somebody tells us we can or, 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 or conditions change. Our hope is that we stay traditional the rest of the year. So I know it started a rumor, but it's kind of a common sense deal that, you know, take your device home. You're going to be home for a week. If the weather gets bad or something, nothing else, the younger kids can log on and do things. Because it's really just pre-K through five. Because, you know, six through 12, they're supposed to be taking theirs home every day anyway. So, right, yeah. and, and we're not going to have, I know the other rumor to that was that we were going to send homework during oh. Thanksgiving break. and Oh, no, please don't. You know, I always tell everybody when I was a teacher, if you think I'm going to assign homework over the break, you're t I'm saying I'm going to work too. Because <laughs> so, well, our, teachers need a need a, our teachers need a break too. I, I don't think we're assigning any homework for Thanksgiving break. Uh, we, we are just sending that device home so you have it in case you need it if something changes. And, and when we get back on Monday, there's a change. You know, and, and we also know there's a probability that with families being around people and, and, and changing atmospheres, uh, we're going to have some students that get quarantined that may be quarantined a week from Monday that, that we didn't know. And they'll already have their device at home, and we won't have to worry about getting it to it because it's kind of an interesting phenomenon. But we always have a certain number of students on quarantine, but we have some rolling off every day and some added every day. Well, everyone who's quarantined right now will be off of quarantine when we come back from Thanksgiving. We're just about everyone. So they'll all be back able to come to school. But if we're going to have 150 students quarantined when we come back from Thanksgiving, which is pretty much the average, None of those are quarantined right now. So by having everybody take their device home, we're ensuring that anyone who might get quarantined during the break will have their device at home. And it's a practice that we were trying to do with one-to-one -one transition. Sure. And we just haven't, but we finally got all our devices in. So the timing kind of... Yeah, the, the issue has always been we want 6 through 12, bringing them home every day. I'm not sure the third, fourth, and fifth grade, uh, you know, we've gone back and forth. Should they be taking them home every day or not? You know, as, as, a, as, a, as a grandparent and, 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 a, and a former parent and, and a teacher, uh, I was even an elementary principal once. But, you know, having pre-K kids co tote their iPad back and forth every day, you know, we're not sure if that's, that's healthy or good for them and, and their parents having to keep up with the chargers and the iPad and such when they get at home. But taking it home over the weekends and, and, and breaks is something that will probably become more of the norm than, than an exception. Something that we're doing really cool that we've never done and I'm excited to share is happening Monday at Central Middle School. Do you want to fill our families in? Yes. You know, they've, they've, you know one of the things I've, we've always worked on and, 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 and uh, I have personally is in the districts I've had, and, and again, it's one of those deals. I have the ideal. Other people have done the work. It's easy to fun to take care of. Take I get to take credit for the idea, but you do the work. <laughs> you know, so what I'm saying is it's, it's a combination of effort, but 
We're going to provide meals. And the way the, the way the federal government has set it up now, on Monday you can go to Central Middle School and pick up 14 meals. That's two meals a day for the next seven days. So every child 18 and under, go get 14 meals. So if it doesn't matter. if Everybody's free. It's free. Go up there and get your meals. We've got our new packaging system. Some of them will be frozen, heat and eat. Some of them will be prepared. They'll probably have a hot meal ready to serve that day if you want to get it. But uh, we would like to serve, I mean, I, I would like for the cafeteria people to call me and be and gripe at me for making this announcement because we have thousands of people up there trying to get meals. We would like to continue this. We, we are going to continue it over Christmas break, but we would like to continue this, you know, at all times and, and get our parents used to it. If, if we take an ice day or we got a virtual day or anytime we're not in school, we would like to work to provide meals for our students because – we know that is some of the needs we meet. And as a parent, if you're working and your students are home, that's one of the burdens that's added because we're off all week. And that's not always the case here at Lawton, that you're off all week for Thanksgiving break. Uh, you know, it was determined with the calendar committees that those short weeks are, are, are low-level instructional days or low-attendance days. So one of the things a lot of schools have strived is to, to remove the short weeks and just take the whole week off and call it a break. But it does create a little bit of a change to the parents because now they got to figure out some of you may be working Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. you got to figure out child care. But even if you leave your middle school student and they're old enough to stay home, then you got to figure out how they're going to get food. You, you know, do I got to go to the grocery store, yada, yada. Now we, we've got it set up where if you'll go by Monday and pick it up, they'll have food for the uh, 14 days, which is uh, – Kind of interesting. I hope we have a lot of people do it and we get some good reviews on that. And uh, we'll continue to work to make it more accessible by in increasing the number of locations. If a lot of you come up and get it, we'll add locations in the future and also improve the what type of food you're able to pick up and, and, and adapt that as, as we meet your needs. And there's no reservation for our families to make. You simply come up between 11 and 1 p.m. at Central Middle School on the front drive, and it'll be a grab-and-go style. Yes, and my understanding is no names. You just, you got, I, I've got two children. I need, I need two, pa two packages of 14 meals. You drive off with 28 meals. Uh, you know, and so and if, all LPS students are all LPS and students, eighteen and under, and all so. eighteen and under, and, and I know you've talked about, hey, you're going to run up there. I hey, am. It'll keep <laughs> you from having to prepare snacks. You'll say, hey, you got your own snack pack over there. You, you can find something, and I'm sure you have to cook Thanksgiving dinner. But uh, it'll it's, it's it's a great benefit, and I'm excited that we're doing that. It's the first time we've yeah. ever done it in the district. So, and those of you who do, please comment on our lot in ps.org. You know, we look at those comments and try to ask questions. So. Please take the time to comment and, 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 and tell us how easy it was to get, how the quality of the food, and, and, and was it helpful. And, and we'll strive to make that better. As you know, we talk a lot about you don't have to be bad to get better. It's a service we're offering because of the changes we've made in, in this COVID area, but it's also something that we, we want to get better at it as we offer it. We know it's not going to be the best the first time, so understand we, we'll work with you to make it better. But give us some feedback so we can, uh, we can try to do that. This past week, we just had, or Monday, we had LPS on the go, and we had amazing turnout by our families. We did it at the mall this time. Yes, and that's exciting. You know, we, we're really working toward that, and and uh, you throw things out there, but we're going to work with FISTA in the city as, as they as they acquire the mall and maybe getting a permanent space in the mall to have LPS on the go. So LPS on the go becomes a a a, 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 a seven day a week has a, a set schedule where our virtual families have a place to go, and even even our traditional families. If you're a parent and you need some technical problems, your, your iPad's going back or forth, or, or, or there's just some questions you have, there's some paperwork you know you need to fill out, but you can't find it, we'll try to have it available up there and just for regular questions and answers. And uh, we'd like to make it have a presence there uh, so people have easy parking, easy access, uh, they may be going to the mall anyway, grabbing, you know, lunch or something that gives them an excuse to kind of go stop by and, and, and get some questions answered. And uh, we had liked to be where our parents are and continue. We, we know that to be successful in education, that partnership with our parents in our community are, 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 are the most important thing you can do. There's not very many educational platforms successful without parent engagement and parent involvement. And so this is the way we're going to come to our parents and make it where they have easy parking. Uh, they're going into the mall. They don't have to walk through a school or, 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 or try to get into Shoemaker where parking's not real well. Uh, and, 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 and we're excited about it. We did have a few questions when you spoke of virtual families about, is it still the, 
families that aren't comfortable or that have been virtual and want to do traditional? Is it too late in the semester or should they wait till the start of January to start that transition? You know, th those are those are good, you know, because the flexibility we created, we've been we've we've talked about this a lot. The flexibility created that came from my office created the work came from the teacher's desk and the counselor's desk and the principals you know and, and people that know me know i talk about that a lot for every new idea i have new exciting mandate or innovation i'm creating work for someone because and i'm delegating it out so that so that's a we understand how, how that can create a little bit of problem the flexibility has been great for parents and students we do have some parents and some students who have switched back and forth numerous times so we know at a certain point that gets counterproductive, but if you haven't changed or if you're just coming, you still have that flexibility. If you've changed three or four times, my recommendation would be try to stick with what you're doing until, until Christmas and we get a new semester going. We'll, we'll let you look at a different platform, but you know, it's not that we want to take your flexibility away, uh, but if you, if you are moving numerous times, we, we, we would expect you to, to explain to the principal or the counselor why you're, you're moving so many times. And if it's still something that, that, that we understand and we feel like it's best meeting your needs and your, and, and your child's needs, we'll continue to allow that. Is there anything as we wind down our podcast that you want to say to our families as we head into the Thanksgiving break? Hey, you know, I'm excited for you, you know, Thanksgiving and, and, you know, just, be thankful that, you know, what we have. And, and you know, and I'm telling you in August, there's no one thought really thought we'd still be in school at this time, except for those that thought as soon as the election was over, that it would go away. But we're we, still here. We're still here and the, and the COVID's still here. Uh, hopefully those vaccines are coming and we can get back to normal as soon. But I got to say, the thing I am thankful for is our staff and our families, because we at Lawton, I'm getting calls, as you know, we were we talked to the State Board of Education last week. We get calls because people in our community are, are spreading the word of how successful we've been in dealing with these educational platforms and this situation. And we does not include me. So it's really how, it's success, how, how successful you guys have been because our parents and our teachers, they've done a great job and they've worked together and they've been supportive of each other. And, and, and we've made this work the best possible way. So, so that's exciting for, uh, for our teachers. And, you know, I, I am going to throw in the last little uh, thing for our teachers just to be thankful for what they did uh, at the at the Thursday board meeting, we're going to have a discussion about a, a holiday bonus. Uh, we can call it a stipend, but of one hundred and fifty dollars to every staff member in the district. Uh, just a small token, and you know, I know Uncle Sam's going to take his part. I just can't help that. But everybody should get, and, and we would put it out in the December payroll, December tenth. So if everybody gets over a hundred dollars somewhere in there. Uh, that's enough to help pay for Christmas dinner or, or, or a night out or, 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 or something special. It's, uh, it's not near what everybody deserves, but almost everybody who works for a lot in public schools has put in more time and effort and, and worked harder and gone through stress because of the COVID for us to be able to come up with just a small token of our appreciation. I want, it's just the way the board in, in the district wants to say thank you to all of our staff members for what they've done. So, you know, we're, we're looking forward for, you know, that and, 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 uh, and, and moving forward. And that's really exciting to share with our families. Mr. Heim, I'm so thankful for your time as always. I wish you and your family a wonderful, safe, Thanksgiving full of food and laughter um, and, and we'll be back on Monday is there anything always as our you know we have Mr. Hyman said to reach out to us at info at lawtonps.org and if you have any questions or concerns please share them with us as always follow us on our YouTube page and our social media pages we have some great celebrations by our students that we would love for you to see and share Mr. Heim you know we answer info or info at lawtonps.org questions uh, a lot more than we do those comments and questions on Facebook. So, you know, reach out to us and, and ask your questions and, and uh, we, we'll share, but, and, and, and keep us in communication. And, and I appreciate so many of you who listen to this podcast. We see on social media or sometimes you answer questions that you've heard. And again, I like people with suggestions and questions to shoot emails to us. We, we, 
People would be surprised, even though we have students, teachers, and staff, there's 15,000 involved, that we look through that stuff and, and we gather information and we use that data to help make decisions. So don't think that, you know, you're wasting your time when you send things to us. So, again, thank you guys for everything you do for Lawton Public Schools. And we hope to continue to improve what we're offering families and students. So ha happy Thanksgiving. All right, you guys, until then, have a safe holiday, and we will see you when we come back. See you the Monday after Thanksgiving. That's right. See you then. Ooh.